Let's go back in time from the 1970s through the year 2000, where monolithic apps ruled the data center. Monolithic apps were built in big stacks of code that had releases every year or so. These apps were given many names. Monolithic, waterfall-based, legacy, and it can get confusing sometimes calling the same thing many different names. So we will call them legacy applications. If you talk with folks who worked with these legacy applications, they would probably like to explain how simple the world was when applications were built this way. Let's walk through what that looks like in the data center. We have hundreds of thousands of apps up here, and then we have a castle with a moat around it. The floors of the castle would be seven stories high to represent the seven layers of the OSI model. Oh wait, what is the OSI model? The OSI model is the Open Systems Interconnection Model. It's like a seven layer workflow of steps that happen for data to leave a device and travel to where it is being sent to. So let's talk about the seven story castle and describe what is happening in the OSI model. At the bottom floor, layer one, the data is being transported through the wires and up to floor two, where it is running through switches. These switches help the data find where it needs to be routed to at floor three, and then it hits the firewall at floor four. If it is allowed, then it will go up to floor five, six, and seven to meet up with the application. Voila, the page is displayed. In this deployment method, vendors are mainly consolidated in the stack because using multiple vendors was too complex and customers found efficiencies in vendor consolidation in this model. So on floor two of the data center, there were only one to two switching vendors. On floor three, there were only one to two routing vendors. And on floor four, there were only one to two firewall vendors. F5 is on floor seven. And while there are many vendors at the application layer delivering floor seven services, F5 has always been able to consolidate some of them to reduce complexity. The world was simpler and there was less cybercrime. Fast forward to present time and microservices. Agile development and containers are abundant. Apps have gone from using a shared stack infrastructure to an app per stack infrastructure. Sometimes these may be in the data center and managed by NetOps, and other times they are pushed outside of the moat boundary and up into the public cloud, all while picking up and introducing various new vendors into the stack. So the days of being together in one stack is a thing of the past and more than likely has undergone a complete redesign and deployed in multiple pieces, which ultimately puts the applications in their own stacks. This is key because with this redesign, it is highly likely that you have a hybrid environment consisting of both legacy and modern applications alike. This approach, although functional, increases the cost and hinders vendor consolidation. I'm Melissa Wentz, a solutions engineer with F5, and today we will go on an extraordinary digital journey on how F5 services can deliver and secure monolithic and microservice applications on-prem, in the cloud, and using software as a service. By the end of the video, you will have a better understanding on how far we have come on our journey to simplify our products and services and bring them together for streamlined secure deployments to plug into any of your environments. On this journey, we will look at how F5 has delivered in application delivery and security on-prem, in the cloud, and using SaaS. To participate in application delivery and security, we need to show up at layer seven, or should I say floor seven. This includes load balancing, having a web application firewall, SSL for processing traffic, and also for orchestrating it. Access control, DNS, DDoS mitigation, bot management, credential stuffing, API gateway, Kubernetes ingress controller, and application infrastructure protection. So let's start in the year 2015 with the big IP on-prem. We were great in load balancing, holding the number one market share. We had a market leading WAF engine and certainly good at SSL processing. We had some solutions in access control and multiple features for DNS and DDoS mitigation. We did not have bot management capabilities in 2015, none for credential stuffing, and these at the bottom were emerging requirements as customers started to begin their journey to modern application development. Remember, this is year 2015. Now, as we transition to the cloud in 2016-2017 timeframe, 
we took the big IP and added to the cloud network. And by 2019, we added Nginx. Nginx provides a native lightweight load balancer with a web application firewall that is closer to the app. It is very good at SSL processing, and it has some access control solutions. It provides DNS and DDoS mitigation closer to the app as well. It does not provide a solution for bot management or credential stuffing. It is a great API gateway and ingress controller for Kubernetes now that we are in 2019. It did not provide anything for application infrastructure protection. In the cloud, this is important because on-prem behind the moat, there were not many east-west attacks within your environment. But in the cloud, your applications are spread all over the place, making them an easier target. So that leads us to 2020, where we purchased an added shape to help with bot management and credential stuffing in both on-prem and in the cloud. With all of these capabilities we are stacking on, we are becoming a complete stack for Layer 7 application delivery of application security. Next, we needed to provide SaaS, and we began providing cloud services with the existing DNS. Then by adding distributed cloud to provide a SaaS load balancer, a SaaS WAF, and do SSL in the cloud. Then some access, and certainly DDoS mitigation, and bot management, credential stuffing, API gateway, Kubernetes ingress controller, and this year in 2022, we added ThreatStack for application infrastructure protection. By looking at the chart, we have filled many of the sections for Layer 7 application delivery of application security. Let's look at this one row that crosses all environments and plays an important role in application security, the Web Application Firewall. And to bring further importance to it, let's look at it as one WAF. With the way the world is changing, environments are going from legacy applications, which is here, to the cloud applications, and then to SaaS applications. From a legacy WAF point of view, using the F5 Big IP, customers consolidated here and focused more on optimizing the WAF they had invested in to free up budget to put towards modern application requirements. Then for the agile cloud, during the app explosion, Nginx provided the world with a lightweight proxy with different delivery formats. While Nginx is providing the WAF capabilities, there are many other vendors, vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, providing WAF capabilities as well. Then we shift over to the SaaS WAF, and there are also many different vendors, vendor D, vendor E, vendor F, so now we have multiple environments and multiple vendors providing all of these WAF capabilities, and it creates insanity to manage it all. F5's one WAF matters because F5's WAF can be ran here on the big IP, F5's WAF can be ran here with Nginx App Protect, and F5's WAF can be ran here with the distributed cloud, all while using a consistent, robust WAF engine to reuse standardized WAF policies already approved within their security teams. What this can do for you and your organization is secure and deliver extraordinary digital experiences with F5 on-prem, in the cloud, and in our SaaS environment for your legacy and microservice applications with the ability to streamline the deployment process of the application security configurations using one WAF. And we are just getting started on a new path of our journey with the intent to simplify our environments like we did with one WAF for easy deployment across all those use cases. I'm Melissa Wentz. Thank you for joining me.